by college football. Nick Saban's freaking out, talking about competitive balance, which, of course, we haven't had for years. Last 15 national champions have been uh, 14 to 15 years. I think we'd had a, an SEC team in. Uh, I, I was saying this earlier. Saban's talking about competitive balance. What I think he wants to say is that Texas oil money between Sark and Jimbo is hard to overcome for Alabama's economy. He's had now he's doing a lot of these podcasts and he's going out saying the same thing. This competitive balance, this competitive balance. And my takeaway is, Nick, we've been trying to get you to play a road at a conference game for like 10 years, and you won't. I don't think Nick Saban, I think Nick Saban senses NIL. There are some big check writers out there, and he may not now, Bruce Feldman joining us, he may not have the biggest check writers. Yeah, I think that changes a little bit of the dynamic with recruiting. But like you said, I mean, I think they've won 75% of the national titles in the last 16 years. There is no competitive balance. The SEC has dominated it. I do think you'll see, look, we've seen Louisville, this cycle in recruiting, have a lot of success because they have been very aggressive on the NIL front. They have one or two big boosters. Oregon's got one big booster. Miami's got one big booster. A&M's got two, I've been told. Yeah, and I think it's it's not just that. I think it also comes into how aggressive are they going to be, and I think when you see some of that, you know, some of the stuff is going to shake out over the, it's, we're just one year into this. That's right. But I think the landscape right now, some people have been more organized slash aggressive. We've seen it with Tennessee. We've yep. certainly seen it now with Miami. Yep. That has made a difference. And we'll see what it goes like. I think, I think the biggest thing Nick Saban is reacting to is significant change. Coaches are the biggest control freaks in football, you know, that there are. Right. And I think the idea of something changing the power dynamic and getting a little different, that's the thing that's unsettling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Players have more power. Uh, In the NFL, you kind of know that going to the sport. Like, you bake it in. The billionaire will make the ultimate decision. Your GM will bark about personnel, and your player may bail on you. So I think you kind of know when you enter the room of the NFL, and Nick would tell you this, it's a different power dynamic. College, the reason you coach college isn't because these guys love recruiting. You control personnel. Yeah, now also, but... I talked to a bunch of NFL coaches who want nothing to do with the college way. You have an off season. You have some sense of a normal life in the summer. If you're an NFL coach, you don't have that. I mean, I constantly hear from the college coaches. I, I talk to how much almost disgusted they are by the recruiting calendar, the yeah. way it is. So I think that's the, that's the dynamic that they don't want any part of. And you've now kind of created even more of a, because now their official visits are happening in the summer. Before, they didn't. Now, you, you just have an unofficial visit, which was probably an annoyance. Some kid's in a baseball tournament in your, in your area, and all of a sudden he wants to show up on your campus. Now you got to go in. It's much different with official visits. It's much different with how the recruiting calendar, because now these coaches, they are offering earlier and earlier. So I think that has changed how they operate. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Feldman joining us. So here here's my... <laughs> USC, UCLA aren't joining for a couple of years. So, I'm, you know, as you sit there and you look around at your program and how to make it easier, I don't buy the winner argument. Here's why. Because a majority of college football, even in the Big Ten, is wrapped up by November 16th. USC is going to play UCLA in their final game. That's You're talking what, winter as in bad weather? Right, right, right. I've okay. heard this. Bad argument. The, like the West Coast guys don't go to Washington, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington State in November. I, trust me, I went to college near Washington State. It's cold by November 10th. So the idea of the cold weather, well, USC, UCLA are going to continue playing. So the last game of the year is in L.A. Their last, their last potential road game in the Big Ten is November 16th, 17th, 18th. I've been to the Midwest. I've been to Madison then. It's cold. It's not Buffalo in December. I think the cold weather and I think the travel is a little overplayed. What say you? I would disagree on the latter point. The travel from the coaches I've talked to who know guys who have coached at the University of Hawaii, which you're talking about real long trips. And it's not to say that, you know, you know, Hawaii going to play Rutgers. It's not, we're not saying that, but in terms of multiple times on trips, multiple times a year, it's one thing for, for USC to play Notre Dame and go fly into Chicago. It's another thing to do four trips like that where you're flying east. Everything I've heard from people in football, it takes a lot out of out of uh, college teams. And we'll see how that ultimately plays out. I don't think it's as much the weather. I just think it's managing 
multiple time zone travel. You know, it's it, and you look at the the Big Ten map. I know where obviously Rutgers, Penn State, yeah. Maryland, those are far east. But a lot of those places, Ohio State is still a long trip. I mean, those are you have to get through a bunch of states before you get to where the Big Ten is. And I think that will be a challenge for them. I'm not saying they can't win all their road games, but I think I would not gloss over that for people who are saying, oh yeah, well they've, they've, they, you know, they go to Notre Dame every other year that they, they do, but they don't go to Notre Dame and then they don't go to Penn state or they don't go to Purdue or, or, you know, one of these places, which is pretty far away, Michigan state, you know, Michigan. I mean, look where we are compared to where that is. That's not like a direct shot. Well, I'm flying to Chicago tomorrow, and I can't wait, Bruce. All right, let's go to this one. But you're not playing a football game when you get there. <laughs> you're right. You're probably schmoozing with people, and you're drinking. Yeah. A little different. <laughs> you nailed both of them, Bruce. Good call. A lot of that schmoozing drinking. All right, so uh, being from the Pacific Northwest, Oregon's freaking out. Now, I think Oregon's too good not to be in a good conference. Now, I think Utah's too good not to be in a good conference. Um, I tend to think when and you said this earlier, when uh, it's sort of fluid right now and people tend to overreact to change, period, especially control freaks. And so I said this the other day to a friend. I said, in college basketball, men's and women's, we have a template. We let a lot of people into the tournament and we don't really care where they're from. I mean, Gonzaga is better than any Pac-12 team. It's not a major market. Three teams come out of that conference and often play very well against the ACC and the Big Ten. Big Ten had nine teams in March Madness. Other conferences have one. But you have a big playoff. What I think this is going to create, it's going to um, initiate faster than probably would have happened a bigger playoff. And once we get 16 teams in, Bruce, nobody cares where they're from. You'll get four Big Ten. You'll get six SEC. You'll get two ACC. And you can't tell me if the Big 12, Pac-12 merge, Baylor, Oklahoma State, BYU-Houston, Utah-Oregon-Washington, you're going to get three teams into a 16-team playoff. I think, I think this is going to initiate a bigger playoff because there's going to be so much yelling and screaming about, I mean, it, I mean, come on, you can't, I mean, it's, it's two conferences. And I think a lot of presidents will fight for their schools and say, okay, I didn't want a big playoff but I'm not going to be precious. My coaches are yelling at me and we're going to get to a 16 team playoff faster than we thought. I could see 12 teams. I, I do think there will be expansion because I think there's going to be more money in it. Now I, the issue I would challenge a little bit is to me, comparing college basketball to college football, isn't apples and oranges anymore. Like there's, it's just for the most part, you know, people don't care about college basketball the way they do college football they care about the tournament they care about march madness but and there's betting. like a window of about a month <laughs> yeah. where if you talk about big 10 sec especially it's a year-round deal where people care about it so i think the pushback and some of that you know is probably a little harder to gauge but i do think that they will eventually go to at least 12 teams because there's going to be way more money in it right like all this stuff that is going on is all because of the money, right? So mm -hmm. if you put a huge TV contract down or a bid of what it's going to be, you're going to get way more money for that than you are for four teams, right? Because I, there's more inventory. There's going to be more eyeballs on it. I just think that there is something that they can sell. To me, that's the driver more than anything else. Now, could there be three teams from a merger if there's the Big tw for Big 12, Pac-12? Yeah, it's possible. I'm not sure. I, I think it's probably more realistic that maybe there are two, you know, you, you, you know, as, as much as those teams you said are really good, they're, they are good from time to time. Some are Utah has been consistently good. I think when you look at them in terms of who they're going to play, I think they're going to be looked at a little bit along the lines of how Cincinnati was. If now, see, I don't see to me, I don't, I think I look at Baylor football as an equal to Texas. In fact, they've been better than Texas. For they Texas. have, but you're looking at it with Texas and OU in their conference. When you take them out, when you take USC, if USC is good out, I just think the you're not going to get people who are all of a sudden going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say there's going to be these teams because they're going to go, who did you beat? And I think that's the thing that's going to be hard. You you beat a a seven and, and five TCU team. You beat a, a, you know, a seven and and five Washington state. Yeah. I, I just think they're going to look at the rest of the league. And that's where I, I'm not as convinced 
there's not going to be a lot of pushback on what becomes of these other t- of these two leagues if they end up. All right, what's what's going to happen with Notre Dame? Are they going to join a conference? Eventually, I do think they will. Yeah, I, I I don't think there's a huge drive for them to do it asap, and it's imminent. But in terms of they can wiggle out of the grant of rights because they're with the ACC, which is which is unwieldy. But for them, they're not tied to it football wise, so the money is is not prohibitive. And I just think if you look at what the Big Ten offers for them geographically, it makes a lot of sense. Their big R travel is now going to it at USC. I think culturally, academic wise, I think they see a lot of parallels with who they are. And I think it will make more sense, more financially, that will outweigh Notre Dame just loving the uniqueness and the branding of being the only real independent. I think that ultimately it will be too tempting for them to finally you know it may be a few years from now but i think eventually they will end up in a big I, maybe big i'm just too optimistic i am very optimistic about college football i think the big 12 pac 12 are going to merge and i think it's going to be a pretty darn good conference and i think you're going to have a bunch of oregon utah baylor oklahoma state and maybe they're not I'll, I'll give you an example how about this feldman bruce feldman joining us take out ohio state one team one team tomorrow michigan baylor play i'm taking baylor yeah, but that's like a... All right, all right. Well, uh, well, I'm, just, I'm playing the game. Who would I you mean, take? That, that's like saying, take out Alabama. Well, Tomorrow, well, Vanderbilt no, plays... No, 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 no. You know, like... Well, no, 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 no. I didn't use Vanderbilt. I used Michigan. I said, the Big Ten is not as good as everybody thinks today, and the Big 12 with the Pac-12 would be better. You take out one Big Ten program. Tomorrow, Michigan-Baylor play. I take Baylor. Tomorrow, Oregon in the Big 12 plays Michigan. I take Oregon. So you don't like Jim Harbaugh. That's what this I love comes Harbaugh. Right. <laughs> My take is SEC is a different animal. You can go to the fourth team LSU. They got more players than anybody. The Big Ten, once you take out Ohio State, last 12 years, look at the first round picks from the Big Ten. It evaporates. Yeah, but look at, the, look at what you have in the Big 12, what you're talking about. It's right. not like the, their draft numbers are lower than any of the leagues. I'm not saying the Big 12 is terrible, but I am saying you're talking about, well, taking out the biggest heavyweight. Uh, and I, I agree. But I don't think the rest of the Big Twelve, Big Ten, is awful. No, I don't. I but, mean, I, no, no, no. That's not my argument. It isn't awful. It's not dominating. And I still and think I, it is better it, than, it is. The, than the Big Twelve because I mean, because you're Lincoln talking Riley about ba- Baylor. By the way, the team and uh, look, a lot of respect to Dave Aranda and to Matt Rule for building rebuilding yeah. that program. That was a team that won two games the, the year before, right? So, and you look at this, the team that was one of the best teams in it, uh, you know, going into last year. Iowa State just had its best season ever. They yeah. won seven games last year. I don't think, you know, Texas were getting, you know, excited about them. They won five games last year. This league, Oklahoma State has been consistently very good. Yes. Um, TCU fell down in the last few, few Oregon's years. Oregon's good. Utah's good. Baylor's good. Oklahoma's good. BYU's top Baylor 25. Baylor was good last year. Baylor was horrible the year before. Horrible. Well, it was a bad year. Michigan was horrible not too long ago. Not to the degree Baylor was. I'm just saying. Listen, Mr. Optimism over here. <laughs> okay. I just, I, we, we, we marginalized. If you, if you put in the Pac-12 and the Big 12 together, I think the top six teams are all top 25 programs. And if you take out Ohio State, that's about what you have in the Big 10. Who are I, you, who are you Alex? So tell me, without USC and UCLA, you said Oregon and Utah. Who else do you get excited about in the Pac-12? Well, I mean, outside of Ohio State. No, no, in the Pac-12. In the Pac-12. Um, not many, but I'm saying if no, you take nobody. If I you mean, take Stanford has fallen three. apart in the last few years. You know, Washington f- really fell apart. I mean, you're looking at that that league. I mean, it has really dwindled now. Oh, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, by the way, Utah good. Oregon has recruited well. After that, and by the way, Oregon has a new coach. We'll see how that's going to go. But it's like there are questions about these programs. I just don't. I don't think Arizona I think, State horrible dealing with a scandal. I, mean, I, like, I don't. I think when you expand the playoff, we don't. We won't give a rip. Like in college basketball right now, I don't give a rip. I couldn't care about the conferences. I care about March Madness. The minute you expand the playoffs, we're not going to care as much about the conferences because you know the top four are going to go from the Big Ten and the top four to five. So if you're good, you'll get in. And I think Oregon 
and Baylor and Utah will still have an absolute great shot to get in because they won't have to play as tough a schedule. The college football history is we always want a Cincinnati in. We always want a little guy in, even if they don't have the Well, that was my point a minute ago, whereas Cincinnati, if things broke right, look, Cincinnati's going to the Big 12. I think some of the teams they've scraped up are are good. Good. uh, And that will help. But my point is, if you look at what's left in the Pac-12, I th- I just have a harder sell saying, yeah, it's it's similar to what but, we're but, looking at, the Big Ten, or similar. It's okay. nothing close to the SEC. But the Big 12 doesn't want all the pack. They just want Oregon, Washington, Utah. That's what they – and by the way, they'd probably take – now they wouldn't take Stanford. Big Ten would take Stanford because of the academics. I, well, that's a different topic. That I, mean, do they, I mean, do they want to split the pie with another I, – I don't know about that. All right. Well, they, well, they want Notre Dame. Yeah, that well, that makes sense. No, I mean, everybody wants Notre Dame. Yeah. Nobody wants to hear that, but people do want Notre Dame. All right, uh, that's a lot of stuff. We, we knocked it out of the park there, Feldman. That was good, good work by you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.